Hello everyone, myself Dr. Jyoti Mandala. Welcome you all to the video lecture series on Object Oriented Programming from Java. We are in our lecture number 16. In this lecture, we will be learning about the next concept in our Java programming language that is about methods. So, up to our last video, we have learned about what actually a string is and what are all the different string handling methods we have in our Java programming language. Everything in detail we have learned with example. So, for your reference, I have created a playlist of this Java programming language and the link for the playlist is available in the below description bar. You can go through that so that you can refer all the lectures uh, for this uh, Java programming language. So let us proceed further with our today's lecture that is about method concept. Now what actually a method is, the method is similar to your functions concept in our C programming language. So where a set of statements or a block of statements will be kind of grouped together and that group of statements will be given one name and that is called as a method. Now what is the requirement of creating a group is nothing but if you want to perform a particular task or an operation, we'll be writing those statements and all those statements will be grouped together with one name and that is referred as a method and that method can be called n number of times according to your requirement instead of repeating the same set of statements. So if you want to execute those set of statements repeatedly, simply call, execute those set of statements. That means those set of statements will be written only once and that can be given one name and that is referred as a method which can be called multiple times in some, whenever you want to execute those statements instead of repeating the uh, statements uh, repeatedly in your code. So it provides the reusability of the code. That means once the code has been written for a particular method, no need to write those set of statements one more time. If you want to execute those set of statements, simply you can call that one using that method name and that's why it, is, it provides the reusability of the code. Right? So whenever you want to write any method, uh, you need to follow some naming convention. The naming convention is like this. Always the method name must start with a lower letter. Always, always it is given like the method name, whatever you are going to write, it should start with a lowercase letter. But suppose if your method name consists of multiple words, then the first letter of each word from the second word onwards uh, will should be a capital letter. I'll show you one example. You can observe here, this is consisting of only one method, one word. This is our method name. So all should be of small letters only. But if your method name consisting of multiple words, then from the second word onwards, the first letter should be capital. Observe here, O and N are capitals. So this naming convention or this naming approach you need to follow whenever you're going to do any uh, name to your method in the Java programming language. We have two types of methods, predefined method and user-defined method. So let us see what, are, what is called as predefined method and what is called as user-defined method. Predefined method is nothing but as the name itself it is telling predefined. That means the method whatever is there, we are not going to write on the logic for that one. The method is already defined in the Java class libraries. The only thing we need to do is we can make use of the already existing methods. So these methods are also called as standard library methods or building methods. So here, observe all of you, we are not going to write on the set of statements which are there in the method. The method is already defined, which is already available uh, at the time in the Java library. Just we can make use of the existing methods. Such methods are called standard library, uh, standard library methods or building methods or predefined methods. Here are some examples like length equals compared to we have already used these three methods in our last lecture. These will be used to work with our string handling functions and SQRT is used to perform your mathematical operations. But remember, whenever you want to use any method, uh, these methods are available in a Java class libraries, I already told you. So whenever you are using any predefined methods, we need to import some related packages to that one. Suppose uh, if I tell you like, uh, uh, you you need to use length equals and compare. Even if you don't import any related package, it works. By default, it will work. But sometimes you see we have used the scanner class. Do you remember that one while working with the arrays concept? Now in that we have used nextint method. What is the use of this nextint method? Is that is one predefined method available in the scanner class. Now what is the use of that nextint? Is to read the integer value from the user. 
isn't it or not now that method uh, is available in the scanner class and that scanner class is available in java.uk.star package so we have imported that package at that time so sometimes uh, some predefined methods requires the related package to be imported in our program same like your c programming language do you remember we need to uh, include our header files uh, required header files to be included whenever you want to use some predefined functions there same approach here also here uh, header files are named as packages right so this is about predefined methods now coming to your user defined method user defined method is nothing but the name itself it is telling we are going to write down the logic behind that method so whenever we are writing any method the user has to write down the statements inside that method and that method is refer referred as user defined method so it is uh, according to our requirement we can modify the method so whatever task we want to we want that method to do we are going to write it to that so the general syntax whenever you want to write any user defined method is this one where we need to specify one access specifier um, what up, uh, and then we need to write on the written type and then we need to write on the method name and whenever you are writing any method name we need to follow that naming convention what we learned in the earlier slide and then we need to write on the two parentheses within the two parentheses we need to write on the parameter list right so and the complete thing like method name and parameter list is referred as your method signature and this complete thing access specifier written type method name and parameter list this complete block is referred as your method header now after you are writing your method header you need to use your two flower braces and in between these two you need to write your method body whatever statements you want to write you need to write a uh, in between these two this one okay so let us learn in detail what is this access specifier written type method name and parameter list let us learn in detail so this is the general syntax okay so what for, let us see first one is access specifier as an example i have given public but other than public we have so many access specifiers now what is the use of this access specifier is it specifies the visibility of your method like i mean visibility like your program may have multiple uh, classes it is not like your program will have only one class you can have multiple classes and your program your project may have multiple packages now for that as of now you don't know what actually package is but remember group of classes can be combined together to form a package so like that we can have multiple packages also now if you want if you want your your whatever method you have written to be uh, pro protected from some other classes or some packages then you can specify by using that one that means the visibility can be hidden or the visibility can be made available to all simply by specifying your access specifier in detail about access specifier you are going to learn in future while learning about packages concept right so for the first uh, access specifier is the public access specifier now what is the use of this public access specifier is Whatever, whenever you are writing any method as a public, then this can be accessed by all classes in our application. Any class can use this uh, method, whichever is made public. As the name itself, you are saying public, public is a thing, but all the classes can access this method. That means any from any class, we can call this method. Private, private is nothing but we are saying it uh, private to us only that means it can be accessed only in a class in which it has been defined normally methods are defined in class so in that class only if you are putting private then that class that method will be accessed in that class only protected is nothing but this uh, uh, method will be accessed only within a particular package it can't be accessed beyond that package and default is nothing but uh, it can be accessed only in this package only the difference between the protected and default is uh, it can be accessed in the subclasses but it can't be accessed in the other uh, subclasses that is the difference but uh, in, in detail about public private protected and default access specifiers we are going to learn while learning about the packages concept why because at that time you can understand uh, clearly so as a uh, for the time being what we'll do is we we'll, let us use a default access specifier only where we are not going to specify any access specifier okay so the next one uh, next one is we need to specify the written type written type is nothing but after performing your task if this method is returning any value then that particular value data type we need to mention here 
so here if you are writing in then this method is returning an integer value if this is float then this method is returning a float value suppose if the method is not returning anything then we need to simply specify void same like your c programming language now the next one is method name i already told you whenever we are following a method name we need to follow a method con naming convention like all the uh, characters should be of small letter only if it is of single word but if it is of multiple word from the second word onwards first letter should be your capital letter so but the method name should be unique and uh, always whenever you want to perform these uh, execute these set of statements we can simply execute these set of statement by simply calling this method by using this method name whatever we are specifying here okay next one is parameter list parameter list is nothing but the parameters or variable that are specified in the parenthesis of your method and it contains a data type and the variable name if there are if you, if you don't want to specify any parameters simply provide your provide empty parameter parenthesis or blank parenthesis next one is your method body method body talks about your um, what type of task you are going to perform its related statements need to be written in this method body and it has to be enclosed in between the curly braces like this okay and the method name and parameter list are collectively called as your method signature and the complete this part is called as your method header now to understand this one let us understand let us take a simple example uh, follow carefully all of you i am following the same syntax whatever is mentioned here so first one is i am writing my class let us consider the class is class example and uh, in that i am writing my main method these things you already know and in the main method i have declared two variables a and b and i have created one object of this example you all know how to create an object and all okay and what actual a class is and what actual an object is you all are clear with this one now for your reference i'll provide a link here okay and then uh, i am for using this object uh, i am calling a method called min number now min number is my method now how the min number is created observe here we need to follow the same syntax uh, i am writing public that means this can be called by this method can be called by any by any class can access this method if you write nothing nothing can also be accepted in that case it is called as a default method and i have written a return type called int that means this method will be written in a integer value and min number is my method name observe here two words are there that's why second word first letter is capital letter and it requires two parameters that's why while this is your method definition and this is your method call right so whenever you want to call any method that method should be called by using a object uh, object of uh, uh, of uh, which type of object uh, in which this method is available remember this method is available in this class only so this class object has to be created suppose this method is available in another class then that class object has to be created and using that object we need to call that method Got it, all of you. And then, um, after executing these statements, here is a simple logic to find out the smallest of the two numbers. Whatever value we have given, a and b will be copied into n one and n two, and it will be checking that one. And minimum value will be given, uh, will be stored in min variable. And we are returning that min value. So min variable is of integer data type. That's where the return type is given as min. Now this is the end of your main method. Remember, all of you, without closing the main method, don't uh, don't write any fun any other method once one method is closed then only other method has to be written so from here to here it is the main method and from here to here it is your um, in number method okay always remember any user defined method you are you are writing it can be called by using an object and that object will be in the uh, object of that class in which the method has been created okay uh, so this is the end of your class okay now what we'll do is let us uh, run this program and check how it is working i'm simply copying the code whatever is written here and i'm taking exam well okay so my code is exam ex12 because i already have ex12 and so now observe here ex12 is my class and uh, i am creating an object of that one why because this method whatever i am calling using this object whatever method i am calling that method is available in this class so we need to create that object okay so let us run this program uh, 
first let me save this program we need to save this program using uh, the same class ex well dot java and uh, save okay let us run this program so you all know how to run this program the command we need to use is java c ex 12 dot java if any error is there that will be displayed here if it is coming like this means no error is there then java ex 12 so we got a minimum value of 12 got it all of you this is the way how we need to call a method uh, and the method can be simply called by using an object of the particular class suppose if you don't want to create any object we have an option for that one also so how can we create that one uh, simply we can put a static keyword here but as for the time being let us not go in detail about that static and all but here i am telling you we can create we can call a method without creating the object also how can we call shall i show you Okay, let me show you that one. I am putting this one in a comment mode. Comment. No need to create any object because we are not writing, creating any object. Okay. Simply by writing static keyword here, uh, we can call that method uh, without, we can call this method without creating the object and using the object also. Okay, let us run. Shall we run this one? But in detail about static keyword, we are going to learn in future. But for the, your understanding, I am using this one. So let us run. So you can check here, we got the output. So observe here what we have done. Earlier we have used e dot min number, but now I am not using e dot. I am not calling with the object. Why? Because this method, whatever we are writing, that has been used with a static keyword. That is one advantage of the static keyword. But in detail, in future, we are going to learn about what is what are all the other advantages of static keyword also. Now we let us uh, is this clear all of you? Now let us add one more thing. Uh, like I want to write this this one, okay, in different class. Now, as of now, we have written in the same class. Now I will be writing this in class ex, okay, and I will be writing this method in that class. What I have done? I have taken a uh, different class. This is one class and this is another class. And in this class, I have written this method. Now, how can we do? I told you, you know, we need to create, I don't want to use the static keyword. So we need to create an object, which this method is available in which class? EX class. That means now we need to create an object of EX class. Okay. Now we need to write E dot. Now, always remember the method can be called by using an object of its particular class only. Got it? The and the file name should be, if you have two classes, we already learned in detail about the class. If you have two classes, the class, the name which having the main method should be your file name. Okay. If you are, if you want, I'll provide you a link here about classes and objects. You can go through that so that it will be very clear to you. So, I'll be saving this. File name should be ex12 only because it consists the main method. So let us run this program. We need to compile and we need to run. You can check we got the output. Okay, we got the output. So this is the output where the class is available, the method is available in the same class. We have created the object and this is the thing where we have used the static keyword and this is the example where we have maintained, we have written the method in different class and we have executed this one. Got it all of you? So this is how uh, methods, user defined methods can be written in our Java programming language. I hope you all are clear with this concept. So uh, let us stop here today. So uh, in the next class, we learn about constructors concept. So let us all meet in our next lecture. Until then, thank you all of you.